This takes place in my fantasy story um, in Reisenfeld, which is mountainous rice fields. Um, and it's about a shrubal, which is kind of like these shroom dudes. They're kind of like smartly dressed tree stumps or like little stubby ants with like, uh, um, what is it called? With like sweater, like those uh, sweater vests and stuff. Not sweater vests, but you know what I'm talking about, like vests. Um, so we'll read this. The early morning sun shone over the rim of a great hat. The hat of humble yet wise Padstool, born with the name of Padokstool, but as that is a mouthful, he went by Padstool, called by many Old Paddy, though he wasn't necessarily old, or at least it was hard to tell his age from just a straight look at him. The sun rose over the rice felled in land of Risenfeld and peeped through the great mountains surrounding the outer edge of the land. Off in the distance, Padstool looked out, weary though cheerful, looked out of his weary though cheerful eyes at the variety of denizens that inhabited Risenfeld each as they went about their errands and doings of the day. Padstool, as his name may hint to, was a shrubal, though one of great size. His silhouette was greatly enlarged by the myriad of pockets and pouches draped over his great robes and packs. He wore a mammoth of a backpack full of his oddities and rarities from long journeys gathering and selling. But in all his days, he had set his mind upon Risenfeld. And when he had reached it, he was content. It would be the place of his eventual, though ever fleeing, retirement. Padstool laughed jovially. No reason to quit your life's work, especially when it was so fulfilling and full of wonder. Padstool looked out at the expanse of the lands he now called home, Risenfeld, a land of plenty, rice fields sprawling out in the distance like tributaries of a great river. The great library, also called um, Risenfeld, its home. And Padstool, indeed, had on occasion wandered into its great halls and byways. Housed in the great library was the great jade of Risenfeld, a symbol of purity, plenty, and nourishment. Padstool has come across it in his putterings about that library, and the sight had stayed with him to the day he again looked out over this great land. The town of Risenfeld was met on its eastern edge by far-reaching bamboo forests, with sugarcane growing beside the edge of the forest. The elves of Risenfeld lived in light, carrying basket pears over their shoulders, some full of rice, others of sugarcane, and still others full of bamboo shoes. Many wore shards of jade around their necks, handed down from the fathers and mothers of the past. Out in the distance, a tall elf flipped a frying pan fiercely, preparing the day's breakfast. Padstool's thoughts and preparations of the day were interrupted by the crow of a flock of chickens running down the emerald green slopes of Risenfeld. The chickens were followed by, not far behind, by a young boy with charcoal black hair, his antlers above him shining in the golden sunlight. Come back here, you crazy chickens! The boy shouted, exasperated. Kagu! Podstool shouted as the boy ran fast after the ch chickens. They're heading down by the east southern stream. You best take the river path to head them off at the pass. Kagu shouted back over his head as he ran toward the river path. Okay! Thank you! Padstool chuckled warmly <laughs> as the boy ran over the ridge of the hill down to the river. The wise Shrubal took off his great pack and placed it on the ground as he found places for his new finds on the shelves of the well-loved outpost. Bottles of crystal from the mines of Orenheim placed high on the shelf out of reach of little hands. Flasks of flame bought off of another traveling merchant 
That particular merchant being a young boy with a love of dumplings. Old inkwell tomes from the ink fillers surplus sat on top of mystic rugs from the courts of Meridor. And golden clover honey from the hives of Rowan Dalian bees. As Padstool finished setting all the artifacts and finds in the shop, the panting figure of Kagu trudged up the outpost pass, path with a chicken in hand, the other chickens falling close behind after the leader. Kagu reached the front of the outpost and held the chicken high above him in the sky, panting again, though no less victorious. Thanks, Padstool. I got them all back. Kagu smiled at the old Shrubal, grateful for his sage wisdom. Oh, whoa there. That's quite the haul you got there. Kagu gasped, staring in awe at the smorgasbord of rarities. Padstool smiled in thanks and agreement with the statement. Kagu's jaw dropped in further amazement. Is that Rowan Dalian honey? How in lands above did you get your hands on that? The old Shrubal chuckled with the spirit of autumn leaves. Twasn't easy, let me tell you that. Kagu picked up the clover golden wick liquid and held it up to the sunlight. Warm shafts of equally golden light shone through the bottle in a splendid array of honey-infused radiance. Could I have some? Kagu asked cheerfully. Mom would flip if I came home with a bottle of this in hand. Of course you can, Padstool chimed warmly. And tell you what, I'll half the cost in return for one of your flock's fresh eggs. Deal! Kagu smiled, holding the bottle of honey close to his heart. He handed the old Shrubal scout some coins. He then reached into his egg bag for one of the morning eggs. Kagu placed the egg in the Shrubal's hand in gratitude. His eyes lit up as he looked at the honey now in his hand. Thank you again! Kagu placed the honey in his belt pouch and ran off toward the village. Padstool smiled with the afternoon sun. Yes, the Rowan Dalian honey had taken quite a while to get a hold of and cost a pretty penny, though the joy of another was certainly worth it. He still held the egg in his hand. The old scout set his eyes on the moon white shell. Kagu arrived home with the chickens falling behind. Some had straggled along, but still all made it home safe. He led the, fro the flock into their coop and shut the gate safely behind him. See you all later, Kagu shouted happily to the chickens. He took off the egg pat and placed the egg safely swaddled by the bag in a crate on the far wall. He then reached into his pouch and pulled out the amber-colored bottle of nectar. He smiled and placed it on the shelf. The young boy picked up a staff by the shelf, ran to the grass. He parried and thrust, jumping from patch to patch. Jade hung around his neck, shining in the afternoon sun. Though a rain, an outsider, and quite young, Kagu had his mind set. He was going to be a warrior. Kagu! Kagu! I'm home! Kagu awoke to the sound of his mother's voice. He had trained for a while, then got him tired and fallen asleep. It took him a bit to get his bearings, but then his mind cleared and he remembered the Rowan Dalian honey from Padstool. His eyes lit up as he ran for the shelf on which sat the vial of the golden amber liquid. Mother, you'll never guess what I got from the outpost today while I was out gathering the chickens. That is the story of Kagu and Padstool and Risenfeld.